so I guess taking off, um, you know, you have the propeller going, you get the RPMs on your uh, wheel here to get momentum to get. Well, you actually, I, I don't, I, to, to do that would require, to use the wheel would require um, an actuating clutch during your takeoff roll. So let's walk around the other side, and the uh, lighting's going to be more of a challenge, but... <coughs> So, uh, the output from the motorcycle transmission is to this shaft right here, to which there's this uh, single sprocket that drives the chain for the rear wheel. So, the, the next step in the propeller drive construction is to extend that shaft, you put an additional bearing mounted to this frame member here, extend the shaft and you put a second bear, uh, sorry, a second sprocket that will go up and drive this gearbox. Now, in between those two sprockets is going to be a dog clutch, which you manually uh, adjust when you're uh, folding out from car to airplane. So, basically, you're driving only the rear wheel when you're operating on the highway, and then when you get to the airport, you stop, turn off the engine, and then you switch the dog clutch to drive the other sprocket. So the rear wheel will be free spinning when you're operating as an aircraft. Oh, wow. So then, with the, with the second sprocket, uh, or engaged to the shaft that then spins the gearbox, which turns 90 degrees, and then there's another drive system or another uh, delta chain drive that goes up and spins the propeller shaft, which uh, extends through uh, that piece of control. So that's the next big piece of engineering is to uh, purchase, fabricate all the parts to connect the propeller to the output of the motorcycle. Okay. Okay. So then, I guess. Once you have the propeller going, you just get enough momentum, and then you know your wings would like align it to like take off or get trajectory or how does it? Well, um, I mean, without the tail and the wings on, it's hard to see. Uh, essentially, <laughs> <coughs> it starts to behave just like an airplane. So the wings are all folded out. The tail is way back there in the propeller stream. It has a nice long moment arm. So as you build up uh, speed. The aerodynamic forces on the wing and the tail allow you to rotate the nose and just take off. Mm, awesome. <laughs> That's great. That's Yay. Amazing. And then how, what about like landing and stuff like that? How is it would you say like use the same like you know landing type of scenario with sure. a traditional plane? Or? Well ish. Um, uh, so to be clear, this is a vehicle that will only take off and land at an airport. So it doesn't take off and land from the highway. Um, but once you get to the airport, uh, it operates like any other aircraft. So it'll have the same uh, pattern and same approach as a regular aircraft. One of the big differences is you're landing on only one rear wheel. So it's kind of like uh, the reverse of what a typical tricycle aircraft would be. And it's also different than a tail dragger aircraft, which you generally want to land on the front wheels first. So it's a little bit in between the two, and uh, what that means is you will continue to use the ailerons to balance the plane after the rear wheel hits. Now, because the center of gravity is relatively far forward, the nose comes down uh, pretty fast, so you're not uh, maintaining that uh, less stable situation for very long. Oh, cool. Okay. That's but it's similar to uh, some sailplanes, which have a single main gear. Um, you know, it's a slightly different scenario where they all land on that gear and then they're going so slowly that they just kind of tip over and stop in the grass. Um, and it's, I mean, another example would be if you're doing, uh, let's say, a, a crosswind landing where everything's not 100% square with the wind. Uh, oftentimes in a tricycle gear airplane, you'll touch down one wheel first. Um, so th the landing transient varies from airplane to airplane. This one will be a little bit unique, right. but not completely out of bounds of things that have occurred in the past. Yeah. So you'd have the back wheel land like this, and then the front wheel will go down, yes. and then you have flaps on the uh, wings to like you know break the wind, or is there brakes in here? Or uh, the vehicle has uh, disc brakes on all three wheels. Um, it's uh, uh, new, or it's a hydraulic in the front, and then a combination of mechanical and then hydraulic uh, in the back. So. The uh, stopping on landing will all be done with the brakes. The wing has ailerons for roll control. There are no flaps, which are considered a high lift device to uh, increase your lift coefficient and decrease your flight speed. Um, the reason we don't have them is we want to save weight. And right. this type of aircraft doesn't really need them. Right. Um, 
if we had designed the center of gravity in a different place, we might consider adding them uh, to change the takeoff and landing uh, dynamic. But based on like this design, because we designed from the beginning for no flaps, we don't need them. Gotcha. That's cool. And I think yeah, three disc brakes would like you know definitely. Would you apply them in the same way you would on a like, kind of motorcycle where initially you apply the back brakes and then as the vehicle slows down? then you apply the front brakes just for that so it doesn't throw it off balance. It, it actually works more like a car. So you have a single brake pedal and it applies braking to all three wheels at the same time. Uh, what you do is uh, in the construction phase you adjust essentially the tension in the rear brake cable so you get um, more stopping power, or probably in the phrase. Uh, you lock up the rear wheel before you lock up the front wheel so that you still maintain steering under uh, heavy braking so you don't skid in the front. Okay. And you guys have your own pedal system, right? Like, that's what... Well, because the patent-pending steering system, which right. allows you to have all three flight controls on a single yoke um, independently, um, that means you don't have to have rudder pedals. Right. Um, so the pedal system is very similar to a uh, standard transmission automobile. So mm -hmm. we've got uh, gas on the far right, then the brake, and then the clutch pedal. And uh, so that all operates like a, a standard transmission automobile. And then we've got a uh, hand-operated uh, transmission lever, which is just connected to the motorcycle transmission. So it's uh, one down and five up. So it's just you push it, and or you like a motorcycle, you just push, 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 pull, 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 as opposed to the H. Uh, right. The, uh, and it's on the left, which is and a little clearly different. clearly labeled, yay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> For a couple hundred dollars, I can get a, a digital uh, readout that'll tell me what gear I'm in. Right. Uh, so at some point, that'll probably happen, but in the meantime, I'm buying $200 worth of other parts. Fantastic. So is that an uh, odometer in there, or what type of information do you get off that? Uh, basically, I scavenged as much as was useful off the donor motorcycle. So you'll see brakes, not brakes, sorry, mirrors, turn signals, and then essentially the dashboard from the motorcycle. So it's got oil temperature, or is it oil temperature? No, coolant temperature. It's got coolant temperature, it's got RPMs, miles per hour, uh, the odometer, uh, and whatever other bells and whistles it has for the racing motorcycle that came from the lap times and stuff like that. Um, and I'm essentially using all of the electronics, uh, the stock right from Kawasaki, so I haven't messed with any electronics, um, which is interesting. I gave a talk um, to a group uh, of Experimental Aircraft Association folks, uh, Chapter 983 in Granbury, Texas, uh, a couple weeks ago, and one of the folks there made a really good suggestion and that was to get uh, a power commander, which is uh, essentially a modified uh, control computer for the motorcycle engine. And that will allow me, and the big important thing there is to limit the RPM on the engine, because one of the ways we want to use this and have it last longer is to basically th throttle limit it so it never goes above 8,000 RPM. It's capable of running at 12 and a half thousand RPM, but by reducing the RPMs, uh, the motor will last longer. Wow. Cool. So I guess on one tank of fuel here, how how far you can you like, can you predict like how far you can travel with one tank? <laughs> I was just or? gonna ask that. Oh, <laughs> the design is based on a 16 gallon fuel tank. Currently, it's only got a four and three quarter gallon fuel tank. So with 16 gallons, you can go three or four hundred miles either on the ground or in the air. Cool. Wow. That's so great. You can go from here to Vegas pretty easy. That's, yeah. that's really the design point. You have to be able to get from here to Vegas. Exactly. Yeah. Is that going to be your first test run? Like, <laughs> no, no, no. The first, the first test flights will be done probably in the uh, Mojave uh, Desert. or. Whatever. That's where they have Salt a lot of those. Flights. Yeah. It was <laughs> yeah. So you want to be doing your flight testing wide open spaces, uh, unpopulated areas. Um, and you, in fact, uh, you're required to do, I think, the first 40 hours, like, essentially within uh, glide distance of your home airport or somewhere very close to it. Um, so let's see, maybe the first publicity flight would be to go to Vegas. Right, right. right. <laughs> that would be a great publicity flight. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so how much airtime do you have to have before you can put this on the market? Like how many hours do you have to have 
The way I understand it, it's essentially 40 hours. Oh, um, wow. So basically, you, once you've uh, gotten the, the first one through, it's essentially it's test-out phase. Uh, you're allowed to sell kits. Yay. Fantastic. And is there going to be any sort of storage on here? or? Well, oh. okay. <laughs> so when it comes to trying to bring something to market, the, right. it's a much more difficult uh, Right, than actually getting it. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so one of the liabilities of this design is it only has one seat. Mm -hmm. uh, another liability is there really isn't space to put anything. There's right. no, there's no uh, luggage compartment or anything like that. I mean, you could, you could kind of squeeze something in, but it's not going to be anything more than a small suitcase. Right. Um, so that was really not the purpose of right. uh, this one. This, the, this, those types of decisions were made early on. We basically, only put in one seat. Focus on getting it in the air and getting it functional before worrying about Absolutely. customer type requests. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> basically, keeps the development costs a little bit lower. Um, the two-seater would be bigger, and there are some uh, design uh, aspects of the two-seater that are a little more complicated, more expensive to tackle, given the fact that this is a self-funded venture. Uh, right. Any decisions <laughs> we could make to uh, keep costs down, we, we try to keep going that direction. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, this is good. I mean, if you're just, you know, if you're just commuting. So, I, you know, I, I was talking about this to my friends at work and people at work and like, they're not asking me anything except for when is this going to be on the market? You know, like, because everybody commutes around LA, around LA, but. Well, the yeah. trick with that is you do have to have a pilot's license. Right. So, I mean, that's 40 hours of training and I mean, it costs a few thousand dollars to, to uh, get your pilot's license, um, but anybody can do it and uh, it's really not that hard. Uh, flying is I mean, essentially you mean you're operating a machine and you right. follow the same rules. Uh, well, I mean generally the same principles, let's say, of, as operating other any other piece of machinery like a car, except uh, you have an additional uh, degree of freedom or four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then the other issue there yeah, with commuting um, is access to airports. So right. I mean because this is an airport to airport device. Well, let me rephrase. <clears throat> In flight Landing, mode, yeah. this is an airport to airport device, and then in ground mode, it's an uh, airport to anywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, so it connects all the dots, but if the airports are not conveniently located between your uh, beginning point and your destination, then it, it may or may not be beneficial. So, I mean, it's really a uh, case by case basis as to when this is going to really help out a commuter. Right. And you can park this in a regular parking spot, correct? Or, Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I, it parks in the garage, which right. is also the shop, so I mean, <laughs> that's pretty good. But the, uh, when we were working on the design, I happened to be over at Trader Joe's down, this, down the street, and there were some really small parking spaces. So you're allowed to be 96 inches wide, and we are only 84 inches wide. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons we made that decision was to make it easier to drive in the lane and easier to fit in standard parking spaces. Turning radius, and yeah. Absolutely. And it's I mean, relatively short, so shorter than uh, SUVs. And so, uh, like, Much the garage than SUVs, yeah. Not, you know, not the issue. <laughs> so, actually, yeah, it's smaller than most of the Escalades that I park next to. And sure. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and based on having the uh, essentially the outriggers on the front two wheels, if you're in the space, you can always get out because uh, there's this nice corridor here right. for opening the door, as it were. <laughs> this will eventually have doors. Uh, whether or not they get them done in time for San Diego, I don't know. And then you guys are doing the Red Bull races, correct? That's another goal of yours, or no? Not the, I have no, not heard of Red Bull no, races. No, not the Red Bull races. Maybe it was something else <laughs> that I was thinking of because I think at the... Um, the event that Candace and I went to, you were talking about doing um, some sort of, what was it, I think a competition to see what, I, don't, I thought it was the Red Bull races, where you try to jump over something. Oh, oh, um. Making the farthest jump okay. in San Diego.